I'd like to show you how to set up the Cumbre project file for developing a new website. Before you even open the project file, I highly recommend you duplicate it in Finder and rename it to whatever project you're working on. This will ensure that the original file that you have isn't corrupted and you can always use it to start a new project file without anything changing. We're just going to pretend that I've duplicated my file and this is a new website that I want to start working on. We're going to call this website overview and it's going to be in a subdomain of stackspacecamp.com. I have MAMP running in the background and I'll use it so that I can preview the files and show you a few tricks that will help you get started. When you open the project file, the start here page will show. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the start page, legend, and holding box. I'm going to select them and just drag them down under unused pages because I'm not going to use them for now. So what I'm left with is home, blog, admin, sitemap, 404 and sandbox. Be sure to go into general settings and set your web address as well as in the publishing settings so you can use total CMS without any issues. In the original version of Cumbre in the CMS course watch with insight styles, I had macros to CMS ID strings checked as well as toggle preview set to all true. In this version, I've disabled macros to CMS ID strings and set toggle preview to pull from CMS, as it seemed to be a bit confusing for some users. The reason why I had this set to macros to CMS ID strings in particular was because since there are so many macros within Cumbre, it could take minutes, actual minutes, just to preview any simple change that you wanted to make. Now that I'm running MAMP, everything is local and so I'm not having to tax my server for those changes to come down. And so I'm able to preview my project file a lot faster. So I'm going to leave macros to CMS ID strings unchecked and I'll actually pull from CMS for all the different toggles. That way I get an accurate version of the website that I'm trying to develop. If you're not using MAMP, I highly recommend that you check the macros to CMS ID strings. This will allow you to preview your changes in your project, but it's going to show the actual macro instead of any CMS data that you've added to your admin portal. In order to view those changes accurately, you'll need to actually publish to your web server and then visit the page to see the page changes that you've made. So now that we've set our web address in general and in publishing, there are a couple of things that we need to do. First, we should add our total CMS license so that we can actually use total CMS properly. To do this, we're going to select site top, which is a partial. We're going to double click on site top, and within site top we'll have this other partial called site styles. Once we're in site styles, we have a site styles pin that we can open up and see our site styles. Most of the swatches that are in Cumbre are not kept in site styles. This is so you are able to use the swatches throughout the website and not have them be dependent upon site styles itself. The only swatches within site styles are CMS Core, Font Awesome 5, and a Google font. Everything else can be found in swatch palettes throughout the entire project. So choose CMS Core, paste in your license, close the pen, back out, and then over on the left we'll twirl down and go to admin homepage. Scroll all the way to the bottom, double click on the TCMS Admin Core Partial and then select Admin Core. Paste in your license here and check the Register CMS button. Back out and preview your page. Once the total CMS registration window pops up, you'll be able to click the register button and that's it. Now go back to edit mode, double click on the TCMS admin core again, select admin core and uncheck the box that says register CMS. Back out again and you're done. 
You can twirl up the home page to hide the admin home page. Let's preview our website. So far, since I'm running MAMP, this will be a fast preview. You'll notice that the project looks like it's empty. I assure you it's not. We just need to add content and set certain settings for things to start to appear. Let's go ahead and publish our website. Now that our website has been published, we can visit the admin page for our website. The admin page is whatever URL you have with the forward slash admin at the end of it. The default password is demo123 at symbol. Let me show you how to set a super admin password to ensure that you're never locked out of the admin, so you can always help your clients if they need you. Back in the project file on the admin page, you'll notice that there's a page save partial. Double click on that partial and open the pin. Page safe is default, but if you don't have page safe, you can always use total CMS protect. Click on the page safe stack and under passcodes. Set your super admin password for this demo. The password is still going to be demo123 at symbol. Once you've set your password, go ahead and close the pin and back out. Now you can publish those pages and the settings will reflect on the admin on the user facing side. Once we've unlocked our admin portal, you'll notice something strange. The not found, the requested URL was not found on the server isn't something to be scared of. Also, the question mark up here is just the logo that we have yet to set. If you come down to settings and under site URL, type in your URL for your website. For our site URL, it's overview.stackspacecamp.com. Don't forget the forward slash. While we're here, we'll go ahead and add our site logo. We'll click save in the upper right corner and now when we refresh, you'll see that our admin portal is looking very nice. The reason for this site URL is extremely important. Let me go ahead and give you an overview of the different settings that are here. Site title, site URL, and site description are used in SEO Helper along with a lot of other settings throughout this admin portal. The contact info is used to show in the footer and various other places throughout the website that you'd like it to show. Settings for the contact info for SEO is what SEO Helper uses for the structured data. All of this is automatically injected into the website and used wherever you have the structured data. Messaging info is what is used to tell the forms that are on the website what the from address, the from email name, the to address, and the two names will go to. Social media is where you can toggle on and off the various social media platforms that you'd like to use. Hours of operation are used in the footer and on the contact page. You can have default or custom set. Default is what's used within SEO Helper, so I highly recommend that you set this regardless. There's a cookie policy that you can use under Site Components. You can turn on and turn off various components throughout the website. You can turn on announcements, cookie disclaimer messages, updates, and other components here. Within the menu, you can show credits, message button, phone number, and social media. In the footer, you can have your logo, contact credits, hours of operation, privacy policy, and social media show or not. Here you can set a footer image or you can have just a color. If you use a color, you can type in the hex code for the color you'd like. If you have a logo that is a darker logo and your image or your color that you've chosen for the footer is dark as well, you can choose an alternate logo which may be a light version of that logo so that it'll pop when it's on top of the dark background or vice versa. Under settings code is where you can put in different various code snippets like for Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager or any other kind of code that you need for your website. There's also an import and export feature that's built into Total CMS. Here you can type in your Total CMS license number, we can save that and then we can launch the import utility tool.
And the nice thing is the convenience of having a copy total CMS license here. Copy that and we can paste it right in. We can also launch the export tool and do the same. Also under settings, we can set our password. This is the password that you can set for your user or your client that's different from the one that you've set in the project itself. Each settings page also has this little refresh page button. Clicking this will refresh the page and not the entire page since this is an off-site. If you select to refresh the page using this, it will refresh everything and take you back to the dashboard. Speaking of the dashboard, there are quick links here to help you to add and edit content on the fly. You can of course add or remove any blog type page that you want. Selecting the plus will take you to the blog form for you to add a new post for you to add to your website. Clicking the actual name will take you to the list so that you can see all the different posts that you have. If you twirl down, you'll notice that you have all the different page types that you can edit settings for. Selecting the home page, you'll be able to add a banner title, banner subtitle, add images for impact and then down here you can start to edit the content for the various sections throughout the website. Each page has a section called page settings. This is important because this is the page title that is fed into SEO Helper as well as the page description and the social share card. The link title is what will be in the menu on the front facing pages so that your users will be able to navigate throughout your website. If you do not have a page link title in this version of Cumbre, the link itself in the menu will not show. So it's important that if you want the menu item to actually show, you need to put something into the link title. To demonstrate this, I'll go ahead and I will name this home. I'll save the link title and we will visit our web page. You'll notice that home is now up here. If I go to about us, you'll notice something strange. We get a not found. The request URL was not found on the server error. It's the same for affiliates, books, campaigns, contact, and so forth. We'll go over in a moment why this is, but for now I'm going to show you that if I put in blog for the page link title, save it, and refresh the front facing page, you'll notice that my menu is starting to flush itself out now. Why did we get the error when we clicked on these pages? If you notice when I hover over about us, affiliates, or books down in the address preview in the bottom left corner, you'll see that it says in use dash pages, forward slash books, forward slash admin, dash books, dash page. The reason why it's showing that is because if we go into our project file, about us, affiliates view, books, campaigns, and all those other pages are under unused pages. They haven't been published to the server yet. So how do we clean up our admin portal so that it only shows the pages that we're actually using within the project file? Choose the admin page and scroll down until you see page content buttons and blog list add buttons. When you open the pen, you'll see all the different pages that are in the project file. Since we're only using home and blog, we can get rid of the rest. But we don't have to delete them because maybe one day in the future the client might want an about us page. They may want to start showing off books. They may want to run campaigns or have a contact page. Instead of deleting them, we can just move them down here at the bottom to an unused menu items pen. This is set to do not publish content, which means that these menu items will not publish and when we're done we can just collapse the pin and they'll be out of our way. So let's do that now. Okay, I've selected all the pages that we're not using and I'm dragging them into the unused menu items pin. Closing it up and I'll do the same for the blog list add buttons. I'll open that up and I'll select the various pages that we're not using. Now that I've selected all my blog pages, I'll drag them into the unused menu items pin and I'll close it up. If your version of Cumbre does not have these pins in it, it's very simple to add them. Or you can download the latest version of Cumbre and they'll be there for you to copy into the current project file that you're using. All this is, simply, is a pin set to red, 
Slim note, do not publish content and display warning. Then I've gone in and I've typed up and used menu items and that's it. I'm going to close my pins and then publish my page. Now that my page has been published, I can go back to my admin portal and refresh the page. And now when I click on pages content, I only see the two pages that I want to use in my project file. The same for add edit content. Only the blog is showing, which means that now I can just focus on the pages that I'm using in the project file. If I twirl down the admin page, you'll see a few different admin subpages. The page that we set our URL on for our website is under the admin settings page. This is where you can go in and add various other settings that you need to add for the entire website. For right now though, we're going to click on admin dashboard and we're going to scroll down to where our quick links are. What I'll do for this is I'll add a pen. I'll set it to red, slim note, do not publish content, and display warnings. Now what I'll do is I'll take the different cells that I'm not using. So I am going to use blog post and what I'll do is I'll just drag those into the pin. Close it up, and now when I publish, I'll just have the one quick link and later on if I need to add any more, I already have these sets so I don't have to worry about them. But if there is another kind of blog list that you need to add, you can always do it by copying and pasting and then changing the names and links. And since we're not using events, I'll go ahead and select that pen, turn on do not publish content, and display warnings. And just for good measure, I'll go ahead and set it to red. Now I'll publish and see the changes that I've made. Now my admin portal is starting to look clean and ready to use. Back in the project file on the home page, there are a couple of little things that I wanted to make you aware of. There are a few features that I've added that are really nice for your clients, one of which is a lightbox announcement message. This, as well as at the very bottom, the cookie disclaimer, are both set to do not publish content and display warning. You can always uncheck do not publish and display warning and use the features as you wish. I'll go over what these different features are in future videos as well as top of page announcements. The Cumbre project file heavily uses pins and partials. My recommendation to any user, both familiar with and new to Foundation 6 and Total CMS, is to just create a new project file from the existing Cumbre file and go in and just tear it apart. Go in and break things. Double click on everything you can and find out what it is and just look and see where it is and see if you can figure out how it works. This setup is actually good for people to go and watch the blog in 30 minutes by Joe from Weaver Space. This blog is set up exactly like he set his up in that video. If anything, this is a great learning tool for you to use so you can learn the basics of how to set up a blog using Total CMS and Foundation 6. Once you have the foundation set for Total CMS blog, you'll be able to then understand the rest of the pages that have blogs on them. Because all of these, like courses, credits, drink menu, all are just copies of what the blog is with the name and the CMS ID changed. Now that our project is more or less set up, we can go in and start adding content so that we can see what our page is going to look like. I'll go to the home page under Pages Content and type in Welcome to my website. Save that and we'll preview this. Now we can drag in an image or two into the banner's images impact section, allow those to upload, refresh our page, and now our images start to show under the home page section. Under section one, I'll toggle on show. 
I'll drag in an image and I want my image to show so I'll turn it on. I'll keep the position set to left, set float to yes, the size I'll make 33%, and I'll put margins of 24, all the way around. I'll go ahead and save this, reload our page and here's our logo. But we need some content over here. So under my section title, I'll say who we are and then I'll put in some dummy text. I'll save that. And just to show you that this can wrap, I will add some more text. Refresh, and now we're starting to see our website come to life. Next I'll go on to mid-page banner. I'll toggle on show and I'll drag in an image. Then I'll save. Refresh the page and now the image shows up as a mid-page banner. This one doesn't look the best, but I'm sure you can find one that's a lot better. Since we're not using services, we don't have to turn it on, but we may want something in the section that's above services. So we can turn this on and put in some dummy text here. Maybe we want this to be a bit bigger so we'll make it 24. We'll hit save, refresh our page, and now you can start to see your page is really starting to take form. If I go back into settings and I come over and I scroll down to contact info, I can put in my email address, toggle on show, put in my phone number, the phone number link, and my address. I'll toggle on show for the phone number and the address as well and save. Once I refresh my page you'll notice that the information is not showing. Why is that? Turning on show will show it in various places but there is a master switch that you can set to actually turn it on and off and that is found in the site components. So under footer, I can turn on contact, refresh the page and now the contact will actually show. This is in case you have contact information like the phone number, email, and street address and only want to show one, two, or three of them. So if I were to go back into contact info and turn off the email and refresh the page, the email no longer shows. This is so you can control the content that is shown at a more granular level. If you'll notice something here in the footer, it says designed by Graphic Gato LLC. Graphic Gato is the name of my web design company. You can change this of course to be whatever you want it to say. Next to it it says copyright 2023. This will automatically update based on the server timestamp, so it's always up to date and you don't have to worry about it. Watch what happens when I type in the site title of overview and save it. I'll just refresh the page. And now the copyright with the website title shows in the footer. If we click on blog, you'll notice it's a pretty basic, simple page. And what's going on with the banner? Well, what's really nice is if you click on blog under pages content, you can actually set its own individual banner title as well as subtitle. I'll just call this blog and say enjoy the reading. I'll click save, refresh the page, and there's my banner and subtitle. But what about the background? What's nice about the Cumbre project file is I've made it very simple for you to get things up and running as quick as possible. By default, everything is set to use F6. 
You can toggle on use impact and if you go into the impact settings you can say same as home page or you can do custom for this page. If you leave it at save as home page and refresh, you'll notice it's using the same images that the home page was using. But you can go back and say custom for this page and add your own images and they'll be unique to this page. Since we're using a blog, I'll go back into admin, go to my home page settings and I'll scroll down and toggle on the show for blog post header and I'll type in latest blog posts. I'll save this and I'll go ahead and turn on the divider between reviews and blog posts. Because what this will do is it will turn on a divider that will be between that and the about services. Just to make things a little nicer, I'll refresh my home page, scroll down and see that the divider has been turned on and we have latest blog posts with a nice view all button that'll take us to our view of our blog list. Since we don't have any blog posts just yet, nothing shows but we can easily go back into add edit content. We can click on the plus button to add a new blog post and type in a title. We can set a summary and description. We'll just type in some dummy text, but not too much dummy text. And under content, we'll type in more dummy text. You can add an image and type in some extra content if you'd like. Set an author. Genre is fiction, category is demo, and we'll add a tag for foundation 6 and total CMS. We'll just copy this and paste it into here. And you can add more images for a gallery. But for now we'll click save, we'll preview our page and there's our blog post. Now if I click on this, it takes me to a not found. Why is that? Well, if you've watched the blog in 30 minutes video, you'll know that you actually have to go into your project file, twirl down the blog page to see the blog view page. And in here we preview. And what we do is we just take this text and copy it. Say submit to set the server settings and then in publishing we edit our ht access file. Paste that in, save and upload. And now when we go back, I'm going to refresh for good measure. Click read more. And now it works. Here are our tags, here's our content, our image. You can even share if you're using the shared stack from Weaver Space. If you have other blog posts, they'll show up here as other posts you may be interested in. And if we go to the home page and scroll down, latest blog post shows under the latest blog post section so you can see how very quickly you can have a very nice and clean website with tons of content. Going through and setting all this up manually would take you a very long time. And the Cumbre project file allows you to cut through all of that and just get to designing. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. In future videos, I'll go over SEO Helper and how it's integrated into the Cumbre project file, as well as other aspects that makes the Cumbre project file work the way it does.